Good morning, folks. Yesterday we noted a brief uptick in Earthquake Watch Index, and it came through for us. Magnetic storms are waning, but eruption threats are on the horizon. Two filaments at the limb we'll see momentarily. And my heart hit my feet upon seeing NASA's latest major info release. But let's begin at spaceweathernews.com, check in on 193 angstroms. Even though we didn't have any Earth-directed eruptions, to the left you see that filament we noted yesterday coming in. And when we come down south, we can see there's an equally large rope cresting on the south at the same time. Heliospheric disruption threats, both of them. But alas, the Earth-facing quiet effect continues to stifle solar activity in this direction. Flaring remains low, even as a sunspot group develops into a party. Middle school party, though. Boys to one side, girls on the other. No mixing, no flares. The solar wind stream from the corona hole is waning now. Back to calm levels and Earth's magnetic field calming back down as well. Storm should be over. Looking at 211 angstroms, that corona hole down south was the impetus yesterday to declare a very short earthquake warning, and we'll pause right there, right at 1800 UTC, because that's when it faced Earth at the northern end, and that's when Alaska shook with a 6.3 that may have been a bit higher magnitude, actually. Also took two rare location rumbles as the Moroccan swarm uptick of 2016 continues. More quakes there this year already than the last four years combined. Folks, this is NASA's latest major info release. Apparently, they want to highlight our water world moons for what they are, life potential. Website members, please hold back the urge to roll your eyes and sigh, finally. Indeed, we've been pushing the exoplanet and inner system water world moon ideas for years, especially in terms of what they mean for life in the universe and any life we might meet. You might remember our favorite animation from that series, zooming in on the icy moon, seeing the underwater ocean. This is from early 2014, folks, in terms of where we might find life very close to home. Now, let's watch NASA's latest animation. I will admit, maybe they've got some better supercomputers helping them animate slightly crisper sequences of these things than we were able to show you, but, uh, yeah. All the same stuff from Starwater here, the most watched video series we have, and that's with more than 70 million views online, so it's saying something. While the major flood threat in the south is progressing down the rivers, the west coast is continuing to see significant weather slightly to the north of where they saw it before, and we could see severe storms and tornadoes near those flood hit areas in the south. Website members, if you haven't seen Starwater yet, what are you waiting for? Also. Fly on the Wall was posted yesterday, another great hour-long podcast. All the topics were on point. We've got pressure and radar forecasts and some current conditions, followed by shots of our star to close. Here in the desert yesterday, it was hot, then windy, then dusty, stormy, and we got a hellacious 60 seconds of snow. It's 4.30 a.m., and I am loving the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.